Amen. You're glad to be saved tonight. Say amen. amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see all of you here tonight. Amen. I came expecting to receive a blessing from God, and I hope you came expecting to receive. God's got something for each of you tonight, um, uh, but you've got to ask for it. You've got to want it. You've got to desire it. Amen. Uh, you can come here and cross your arms and sit there and say, well, I just want to see if the Lord can bless me. Uh, and if you come in with that attitude, you're going to leave with the same attitude and not with a blessing. you got to come in saying, God, I want my blessing. I know you've got one for me, and I want it. Amen. Uh, uh, and I'm here to get it. Amen. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this tonight. I'm here to get my blessing. Uh, and if you don't want yours, I'm going to get yours too. Amen. Uh, uh, because I love the blessings of God in my life, and I want all I can get. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm greedy about having the love of the Lord. Uh, I want him to love me more and more and more each day. Amen. Uh, 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 you know, I, as I had children, uh, uh, and uh, when they were born, I loved them. Amen. And each day I've loved them more and more. Uh, you just can't stop loving your children. Amen. Uh, and you just love them more and more. And then when they give you grandchildren, you really love them because you got something else to love on. Amen. Uh, and God's the same way. God just loves us. More and more and more each day. He blesses us more and more each day. Even when we don't deserve it, God blesses us. Amen. Uh, you don't have a clue and, and God will just send you something. Amen. Uh, and you say, I wasn't expecting this, uh, but there it is. Because God loves you. Amen. Uh, oh, tonight. Uh, uh, I'm going to try my best uh, <clears throat> not to hold you too long. You have your Bibles, you would open to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, and I'll read verse 10. Uh, and I've simply entitled this message, uh, Men Pleasers Perish. Amen? Men Pleasers Perish. We need to be God pleasers tonight. Amen? All right, the Bible said, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men... I should not be the servant of Christ. Amen. Uh, you and I in this world will get a job and we'll have a boss. Now, we have to do what the boss says and make him happy. Amen. Uh, because we want to work up in the company, uh, move up the company ladder, get pay raises and all of that stuff. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, uh, Paul said, do I persuade men? Or God, he said, uh, am I trying to make you happy and persuade you to like me? Or am I trying to get God's favor in my life tonight? Amen. Well, there's a lot of times I have to get up and preach messages. Uh, I don't want to preach, amen. Uh, I have to preach to the church hard, amen. Uh, uh, but I'm not here to please you and make you happy. Uh, I'm here to please God uh, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that gospel should convict you uh, and draw you to an old-fashioned altar where you can get your heart right. Amen. Uh, uh, it's not about pleasing people. It's about pleasing God. Uh, and too many times uh, uh, we're trying to make everybody else happy uh, and we're failing God. Amen. Uh, uh, so Paul said, do I persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? Uh, for if I yet please men, uh, I should not be the servant of Christ. Uh, if I stand uh, and I try to preach what makes you happier, uh, then I'm not pleasing God. Uh, uh, we read in other places in Scripture uh, about preachers that will get up uh, and they'll rub your bellies and they'll tickle your ears uh, and they'll do things to make you feel good. Uh, we want to build the church, uh, so I'm not going to preach against sin. Uh, uh, we want to get a lot of people in and get some money in here. So I'm just going to make everybody feel good and talk to you about good things. Amen. I'm never going to tell you hell's hot. We ain't even going to talk about hell because we want to build a church up. And there are preachers out there that do these things just to please the people, just for the numbers, just for the money, just so people will like them. But let me tell you something. I'm not in this for you to like me. I'm in this to preach the gospel so you'll get saved and you can meet me in heaven and then you can like me when we get on the other side. Amen. Or when we get to glory, then you'll just have to like me. Amen. I'll worry about it then. Now don't worry about it tonight. Amen. 
It's not my job to make you happy. It's my job to tell you the truth. Preacher, does this dress make me look fat? Yes. I'm just going to tell the truth. Amen. Brother Jesse says, am I short? Yes. You're short. Amen. So am I. But do I look like it bothers me? Not at all, because I really don't care what y'all think. God made me this way, and I'm just going to be this way. I can't change it. The Bible says, what man can add one cubic to his statue? I can't. I can't make me taller. But what I can do is get in the will of God and do the work of God and serve my God, amen, and stop worrying about what the world thinks. It ain't about what people are thinking, amen. It's what God sees in you and what God wants of you, amen. But we're so worried about what everybody else thinks of us. Well, I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't butt my vest tonight. Oh, I forgot my tie. I, I, Elijah's just going to be mad. He asked me the other Sunday night, where you tie at? I said, this is casual Sunday night. Amen. Amen. Choir practice went long tonight, and I didn't get back in the office in time to put my tie on, so I ain't got a tie on. But I'm going to tell you this, tie don't make the preacher. Amen. 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 I can preach just as good in the Spirit with a tie as I can without one. Probably better without one because it ain't choking me and I can get some air in and get some words out. Amen? Sometimes a tie will hinder you. I recall when I was growing up, I don't think I ever saw a preacher preach in a tie. They'd stand up in the pulpit and read their scripture and then they'd pull their tie off and lay it down and preach. They didn't have a tie on when they preached. Amen? Yeah, some of y'all too young to remember that. But you can look at me tonight. It sure ain't hindering me. Amen? Amen. It ain't the way I'm dressed. You know why? Because God said, rend your heart, not your garments. God don't care about your clothes. He wants your heart tonight. It ain't about what you wear. It's about your heart and your relationship with Him. Amen? Let me read this introduction here, amen. He said, let's start by considering the questions. Do you feel overwhelmed by the stress of impossible goals? Are you burdened with guilt over falling short of others' expectations? What about your own unreasonable demands? Boy, I should have left that paragraph out of there, amen. Because that thing just, just hits me right between the eyes, amen. Do you feel overwhelmed by the stress of impossible goals? Not the goals y'all set, but I set very high goals for myself. I set standards real high. And when I can't reach them, I'll kick myself about them. Because I feel like I'm a perfectionist. I should live a perfect life. And when I mess up, it tires me up. He said, or I wrote these, these things down. I don't know why I keep saying he. Are you burdened with guilt over falling short of others' expectations? Yes. It bothers me to think I'm falling short of what y'all expect as a pastor. That I'm letting y'all down. And I go home and say, now how could I have done that better? How could I have brought that out better? How could I have preached that better? How could I have led that song better? I messed everything up. Well, now I'm going to turn it around. It's all your fault. Because if you pray for me, I do better. Amen? You want a better preacher? Then pray for me and I'll get better. Because you ain't getting another one. I ain't leaving. Amen? I've been here 10 years, so I ain't going nowhere now. I got my foot in the door now. Amen? You stuck with me. He said, what about your own unreasonable demands? Your own demands on your own life. Pushing your own self past where you need to. Struggling with things because you set your goals too high for you to reach. We're trying to please people. We're trying to please ourselves. We're trying to please the world. We're trying to please everybody but God. 
And God's the one you need to worry about because I'm not going to stand before any of you on Judgment Day. You're not going to stand before me. I'm not going to stand before the world. The world's not going to stand before me. We're all going to stand before God. So you better be pleasing Him tonight. Now I can really get on this one. Whether we're trying to satisfy a spouse. Amen. See, I ain't got one. I ain't got to worry about that. I can preach that one. Amen. I don't have to worry about pre pleasing a wife or a husband or none of that stuff. I ain't worried about it. Amen. I get up when I want to get up. I go to bed when I want to go to bed. I go do what I want to do and I don't have to call nobody and check in. Amen. Come on. You're going to find out sometimes that's a good thing. Now, I know you love Brother James and you're going to miss Brother James, but sometimes it's good just to be able to get up and go. You ain't got to get him dressed. You ain't got to get him in the car or nothing. Just go. Do whatever you want to do. You want to go to Longhorns? Go. Amen. But call a preacher. <laughs> of course it is. Steak and baked tater? Call a preacher. Whether we're trying to satisfy a spouse, a parent, a child, a sibling, a friend, a boss, being a people pleaser can lead to defeated and unhappy life. Amen. Being a people pleaser can cause you to get depressed and down and out. Why? Because you cannot please all the people all the time. Trust me, I try that. I try to make everybody in the church happy. And when I get, get these happy, I look over here and they ain't happy. So now I work on them. And when I get them just right and happy, y'all ain't happy. You cannot please all the people all the time. So I'm going to please God and y'all work your relationship out with God. If you ain't happy, it's your fault. Don't let nothing going on around you rob you of your happiness. You ought to be happy simply because you're saved, amen. Do not let the devil steal your joy, your peace, and your happiness. It shouldn't be about all these other things. But when we try to please everybody else, we're going to live a defeated life because we can't please everybody else. And if you ain't pleasing them, you're defeated. You've, de you've lost the goal that you set in mind to make everybody happy. Amen? Amen. I'm trying to make Jesse happy. And sometimes he looks like he is and sometimes he looks like he wants to just stick me with a sword. Amen? Amen. He, his mama said, Amen. She, you, know, you get that look too? Okay, well I ain't the only one then. I got on the Caden last night. And if looks could have killed, y'all would have buried me today. For seven, that boy can give you an eye. He ain't got that thing going on. You can't please everybody. You can't do it. I wish I could. But I can't. And because I can't, I can't let that get to me. Amen? We let it get to us. We'll eventually fall short of someone's standards and feel like a disappointment. To make matters worse, sometimes the one we're trying to please is ourselves. And when we fail to live up to our own expectations, we berate ourselves. Before long, we settle into a pattern of renewed commitment to do better, followed by self-determined effort, then failure, self-condemnation, and feelings of worthlessness. Uh, this is not what God wants for us. It all just leads from one thing to the other. As Christians, we have only one master, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one we are to please, not begrudgingly, but out of love and gratitude for our salvations. Colossians 1 and 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being faithful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, 
When we let others dictate the course of our lives, we're seeking to please two masters, uh, and that never works. Matthew 6, 24 reminds us, No man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Uh, in fact, uh, double-mindedness leads to instability in all our ways. Remember James 1, 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We got to learn to please God. We got to stop pleasing everybody else. Now, Jimmy and April, Dustin and Ashley, Christy, you got to stop trying to please your kids. Ain't your job to please them, it's your job to raise them. And sometimes raising them, ain't, they're not going to be happy with decisions you make. God has given you those children and given you the responsibility to raise them. God is trusting you to raise them right. And God's going to hold you accountable if you don't. You will stand before God and God will say, Hey, I'm trying your works here and you didn't do this and that kid needed it. God is going to hold you responsible. Y'all believe it or not, it's Bible. I mean, do I have to get all in the Bible with this? Y'all understand God wants you to raise your children and raise them right. And sometimes you're going to disagree with this. Sometimes that includes a spanking. Amen. Not a beating, not a beating, but a spanking. There's a difference in beating a child because you can beat him profusely about his head and it won't do no good. Amen. My mama used to say, I'm going to beat you to your nose bleeds ice cream. My mama get violent. I grew up understanding right from wrong and knowing if I'd done something wrong, it was coming. It's okay to spank a child. Amen. 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 It's okay to make them stand in the corner for a little while. It's okay to make them cut their own hickory. Cut your own hickory and bring that thing in here. And you better not bring a little one in here. Because if I have to go get one, I'm going to get a tree limb. Amen. God gave you the responsibility of raising them. Don't try to please them. Supply their needs. Love them. Nurture them. Provide for them. Keep them safe. But you don't have to please them. My grandbabies have learned this over the last couple of months of staying at my house. Because living with their mom and daddy, their mom and daddy always said, what do you want for supper? They're seven and five. They don't know. They'll pick and then they try to fix all these different things. At my house, I'm cooking. I'm putting it on the table. You'll eat what's on the table or you won't eat. I'm not asking you. I'm cooking dinner. And I cook dinner every night, set it on the table, and them kids have no problem eating. They'll sit down and eat. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to please people. I'm not here to please you. Me and the Lord's gonna set the table out tonight, and you're gonna eat from the Lord's table. Or you can, you got the option of saying no and walking out. But me and God ain't asking you what you want to eat. We're just going, God's going to give it to me. I'm going to put it on the table and you're going to eat. Amen. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's chocolate cake. It's hallelujah. We're going to glory. And sometimes it's Brussels sprout. Just eat them. They're good for you. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Nobody in this world likes broccoli. That's why they cover it with cheese. If you really liked it, you wouldn't eat cheese on it. You'd just eat the broccoli. People have asked me a lot of times when we eat hot dogs out here, why don't you put anything on that hot dog? Because if it's a good hot dog, it'll hold its own. It don't need nothing on it. If it ain't a good hot dog, they better be some onions and chili and cheese and relish and sauerkraut and ketchup and mustard. Anything. If it ain't a good hot dog, you got to load that thing up. But if it's a good hot dog, you don't need nothing. It can hold its own. If it's a good beef hot dog and it's, it's been cooked right, it'll hold its own. 
What God puts on this table right here for you and I, it will hold its own. It doesn't need worldly stuff thrown on it and piled on it so you can eat it tonight. Me and God's not here to patty cake with y'all, to put a pacifier in your mouth and make you feel good, amen. We're here to preach the gospel and get you in an altar and get you right, amen. Well, if I could ever get in the message, we'd be all right. We'd just been in the introduction. Amen. Let's get in this message real quick. I better hear a big old praise God because there ain't but three points in the message. Amen. Woo! Thank you, preacher. You ain't got to thank me. It's all God give me. But I'm a good preacher, so I can make them long. Three, three, three points can be 30 minutes apiece. That's an hour and a half. Amen. <laughs> Y'all sweating now, ain't you? Number one, by pleasing men, we'll lose our liberty. God has set us free. Free to worship Him. Free to feel the Spirit. Free to enjoy God in our lives. To enjoy our salvation. A lot of people get on that verse that said that those that endure to the end to be saved. That's got to do with tribulation. That ain't us. I'm not enduring my salvation. I'm enjoying it. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're enduring your salvation, something's wrong. You ought to enjoy your salvation. Enjoy being saved. Enjoy being a child of God. But when we begin to try to please men, we lose our liberty. We lose that freedom. Galatians chapter one, verse, chapter five, verse one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast in the liberty that God has given you, and stop getting entangled with the yoke of bondage, getting entangled with sin, getting entangled with the weights and things that weigh you down. That's what pleasing men will do for you. You get saved, you got the freedom, and now you're getting entangled uh, with trying to please people uh, and you're getting yourself pulled back down. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord said, take my yoke upon you. Let me carry the load. Because when you yoke up with Him, just like two oxen get together, they always put that older, strong oxen with a young one because that old one knows how to plow straight and that young one wants to go crooked. That old one will teach that young one to go straight. If you and I will yoke up to the Lord, amen, of He'll carry the majority of the Lord. He will keep us on the straight and narrow and teach us how to plow straight. Amen. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn about Jesus. You cannot learn about Jesus if you're not opening up your Bible during the week and reading it. You've got to get in the book if you want to learn about Jesus. And I wrote this down under there. Are you feeling defeated or weighed down by life? If so, you may be carrying a load someone else put on you. You may be carrying a load that somebody else put on you because they put their expectations on your life. They put what they expect you to be on you. What they expect out of you, they put it on you. And their expectations on you have begun to weigh you down because you feel like you've got to meet their expectations. I don't have to meet anybody else's expectations. I have to please God and meet His expectations. 
But other expectations are put on us and they begin to drag us down. We begin to try to reach that goal that they set. How many times have you been to work and your boss has said, this is, and I know y'all have heard this, when you go to work, there's quality, quantity. Okay? Quantity is how much, quality is how good it is. And there's some bosses that will tell you we are pushing quantity over quality. We don't care if it's a perfect thing. If there's some stitches messed up in it, that's okay. We want quantity. Get us a bunch of them. We'll still sell them. Then there's folks say, no, we want quality over quantity. We want people to know when they buy our product, they get our name, it's worth getting. Amen? It's other people's expectations, and we get caught up in it. I get caught up in what I think y'all expect me to be. Because I was taught years ago that a preacher should always wear a tie. And I got caught up in that for a long time. And I always wore a tie. And then when I got to figuring, you know, I, I, I'm just, I don't like this. I started buying me them shirts and button up all the way. And I'd buy them shirts and button the collar up all the way and wear a vest. And every Sunday, that's all I ever wore, a vest. And, and then with some nice shirts. I had a red one that had a gold thing that went across, uh, uh, some kind of metal gold chain thing. Well, I looked pretty in that thing. Woo! I'm telling you. And I got, I still got a bunch of them shirts at home. Only problem is, I'm a little stout to fit in them. Amen? That comes from too many biscuits. Folks, need to stop pleasing people. Number two, by pleasing men, our Christian success will be hindered. By trying to please people, our success as a Christian. Now, what am I supposed to succeed at as a Christian? Well, number one, I'm supposed to win the loss. But if I'm trying to please people, I can't win people. Amen? You can't win them if you're trying to just please them and make them happy. Oh, well, don't, don't worry about that. It's okay. If it's sin, it ain't okay. We're not here to please them. We're here to tell them the truth. The truth is, and it don't have to be ugly, the truth is God loves you and He died for you and He wants to save you. That's the truth. You don't go up and get in somebody's face and say, you're drinking and you're going to die and go to hell. You don't get in their face and get ugly because they're going to get defensive and you can't win them. You win them with love. Love them into the house of God. Love them into the altar. Love them into the arms of Jesus. And Jesus will take over and love them into eternity. We've got to love them. Another thing is part of our Christian success is our prayer life. If I'm pleasing people, I'm not praying enough. I've got to pray constantly, all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing. We've got to pray more. you got to study more. Boy, now this one, a lot of people say, I do pray. This one hits everybody between the eyes. We need to study more. We need to get in the Word and study more. Amen? Amen. That means a lot of you husbands need to stay home and watch the kids on Thursday night because the ladies will come over here and go have a ladies' Bible study. Amen? Yeah, y'all ain't saying amen because y'all say, huh? <laughs> y'all scared to study, ain't you? Men ain't going to show, I'm not coming. It ain't a man thing. And I ain't saying we're doing that. I'm just throwing that out as an example. We need to study more. We need to get in the Word more. It wouldn't hurt y'all to have a ladies' Bible study where you can fellowship and talk about things that you need to talk about and get in the Word. More study. 
Y'all think the only person in this church that needs to study is me because I had to preach. And that's not the case. The Bible says, study to show yourself to prove unto God a workman, not a preacher, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman. That's everybody. That's not just me. By pleasing men, it hinders our Christian success. Galatians 5, 7 and 8. Ye did, not you are, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. You've been persuaded to fall back and get hindered, and it did not come from God that called you. It came from the world. It's the world that hinders us. It's people that hinder us. They get in the way. Be careful of people's advice and guidance. It may be contradictory to God's Word. You can ask people, yeah, i got a question. Can I ask your advice about this? And if it's contradictory to the Word of God, it ain't good advice. Now, when I counsel with people, I always bring it out of the book. I had a man ask me one time, he said, Preacher, me and my wife's having trouble. He said, can you counsel with people? I said, yes. He said, if we come down, would you counsel with us? I said, yes. He said, but we don't want to hear none of that Bible stuff. I said, then you need to find another counselor. Because I'm going to tell you what says the Word of God. Because I want you to understand something tonight. Everything about how a husband and wife should treat one another is in this book. Amen. And it starts out by saying that they should respect one another. Husbands, if you don't respect your wives, you've got a problem and we need to talk. Wives, if your husband don't respect you, why ain't you done hit him with a frying pan? Get his attention. Wives, you need to respect your husbands. And if you don't, I want to know about it. We're going to have a talk. The first thing is respect for one another. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 if you need to know where it's at. And that whole chapter deals with husbands and wives and how they deal with one another. Because I use that chapter when I counsel with a couple before they get married. I know what the book says. Goodness gracious. Be careful of people's advice and guidance. It might be contradictory to this word. If somebody tells you something, listen, when I always ask for advice, I need advice about something, I'll ask him, and I'll ask him, and I'll ask him, and I'll ask her, and I'll ask her, and I put all of that together. And I see if there's any commonality in there. And then that's what I'll look at. That's like having this circle, this circle, this circle, and where they intertwine, that's the commonality. And I'll look at that and say, okay, they all agree right here, but no matter what they tell you, it may not work for you. Because the advice I give that I used might not work for you. But if I give you advice out of that book right there, that works. That never fails. Anybody can give you advice, but because it worked for them doesn't mean it'll work for you. Because everybody is an individual. Everybody sees things differently and handles things differently. Amen? Number three, by being a man pleaser, we hurt the church. By pleasing men, we hurt the church. Galatians chapter 5 verse 9. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now leaven is yeast. And I can use yeast. I could use salt. You got a plate there, a plate full of butter beans. And you put just a little salt in there and stir it up and they're all salted. Okay? A little bit will salt the whole thing. Leaven is yeast. You put a little yeast in there, stir it up, and it'll do whatever yeast does, makes it rise to the whole thing. 
Alright? It gets in the whole thing. And what Paul is saying here to the Galatian church, a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. He said a little bit of world in the church will get in the whole church. A little problem get in the church and it'll get in the whole church. Amen? It doesn't take but just a little bit and the devil will sneak in and he'll get a toehold before we know what happened. That's why we got to stay ready, prayed up, and prepared uh, because he's trying. The Bible says, walking about seeking whom he may desire. Uh, Jesus told Peter this, the devil desires to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that when you are converted, uh, you will strengthen the brethren. Amen. We need to be careful not to count man-made church rules more than binding the scriptural truth. There's a lot of churches, and every church I know has a decorum, and a decorum is the bylaws that help protect the church. And a lot of those bylaws are something men come up with because men wanted something. We're not in this thing to make man laws and man traditions and all of that. It ain't about all the hearsays or the wise tales or, or gossip or all of that. It's about thus saith the Word of God. Amen? If we begin to build our churches on man's opinion and man's perception of things, the church is going to fall. Because Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. And the thing we got to understand, He's the rock. We are the church. He's building us on Him. He is our foundation. And if He's not your foundation tonight, you ought to be already down here in this altar getting you a new foundation. I watch these DIY shows where they remodel these houses. And these people the other night went and bought them a house and they paid $825,000 for the house. And when they got in there, they said, we're going to spend $150,000 and remodel it and then we're going to sell it for ever how much and we'll make $150,000 profit. That's their plan. And they got in there and they began to tear the walls out and all the studs was eat up with termites. And then they began to tear some of the subfloor out and all the joists down there and, and the beams in the bottom down there had been rotted out with water damage. They had to replace the whole foundation before they could do anything else. You can't be a walls on a foundation that's going to fall. you got to have a good foundation. You can't put roof on walls if your foundation ain't no good. you got to have a good foundation. And the Bible said in Corinthians, other foundation can no man lay that's already laid, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our foundation. We can only build on Jesus. If you're building on anything else, it's going to fall, amen. Jesus said if you build on the sand, it'll fall and wash away. If you build on the rock, it ain't going nowhere. And He's the rock. Why do you think He built the church on the rock? So it would not go away. And let me finish that. Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The devil cannot overthrow the church. He might want to overthrow individuals and he might get you, but he can't have the church. We need to be careful not to count Man-made church rules more than binding than the Scripture truth. If we're not careful, this will lead to judging people based on adherence to human standards rather than God. Y'all catch that? Sometimes we say, I'm going to be a fruit inspector. We start judging people and we're judging by man's standards rather than judging by God's standards. And when you start looking at God's standards, there's not very many you could judge by. Because He said, judge not that you be not judged. Amen? That doesn't mean we can't be a fruit inspector. When He said judge not, He's talking about judging a man's salvation. 
I, I don't know anybody's heart, so I can't judge whether you're saved or not. But I can look at the fruit you bear and judge whether you're living right or not. Amen? Amen. I can look and see where you're living right or not, but I don't know if you're saved or not. You know, there's saved people that don't live right. They're backslid. They're running from God. They're hiding from God. Now, I can't judge whether they're saved or not, but I can judge the fruit I see. I say, brother, wait a minute. Now, you tell me you're saved, but what you're doing and the life you're living is not showing that. Amen? Amen. Now, you understand the difference in judging and, and looking at the fruit, don't you? Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Listen to your pastor. Do exactly as he says, and you'll get to heaven. I thank you. Somebody know hey, that ain't what it says. It says, "Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is profitable for you." What he's saying is, it's my job to preach the word. And it's your job to take the word and eat it. It's my job to preach it. Sometimes I have to shear the sheep. Sometimes I have to prune the trees. Sometimes I have to just preach it hard so you can get right. You want a tree to grow, you have to prune it. Prune it back. All our rose bushes out here got pruned back. When the spring comes around, them things don't come out look real pretty. You got to prune them back. Amen? You got to shear the sheep. If you don't cut the wool back on the sheep, it will honestly, literally choke that sheep until he dies. It will get so much around his neck that he can no longer breathe and he'll die. You have to shear the sheep. And in spiritual terms, every one of us are sheep. That means that sometimes I have to come in here and cut you down a little. Amen. Sometimes I have to preach hard. Sometimes I got to preach about tithing because some of y'all don't want to tithe. Some of y'all trying to hold back. No, we're not. Look at the board and tell me you're not. Amen. Oh, me. Something ought to be coming. Y'all don't like He's He's shearing us. Yeah, y'all ain't happy when you get sheared, are you? Well, I ain't happy having to do it. I want you to live right 24-7. And if we come over here, I don't have to preach to the church. I'll just preach hallelujah, glory, praise God meetings and, and just shout for two hours. Amen? Amen. But not everybody's going to live right. Not everybody's going to do right. Y'all going to mess up. I'm going to have to get on to you. Because as an under-shepherd, that's my job. To get on to the sheep. That's why the shepherd always carries a rod and a staff. One to lead, one to knock some sense into you. Amen. Amen. Have to do that sometimes. But either one I use, know this. I love you. I want the best for you. I want you to be in heaven with me one day. I, when I get to heaven, I want to see all of you. I hope the Lord lets all of us have our mansion in our own little subdivision. We can all live together. Amen? And Barry will live on this side where the sea of glass is, where that, all that water's at, so we can come up sometimes and she'll feel at home. Mary said, I don't want to be on that side. <laughs> I won't be on that side. You'll feel comfortable. Amen? I want us all, we just get our own sub, get our own little cul-de-sac. We'll all just live on our cul-de-sac together. And Christy will be over there and we'll all go over to her house and eat. Amen? Yeah. Kathy said, no. <laughs> they ain't, I'm getting, she said, I'm getting my own mansion. They're not coming. Nope. No. Anyway, I see it. That's, she said, praise God. I got my own. <laughs> Hey man, we all get our own. And I'd love my mama to be on one side and my daddy to be on the other. 
Then the rest of everybody else can just gather around. I don't know that I'll ever see them. Because there's lots of folks I want to see. A lot of time I want to spend with Jesus. A lot of time I, I can't tell you how much time I want to spend with the Holy Ghost. Because that booger, mm, he's been keeping me for over 50 years. And I know he's wore out. I know he's got to be tired. Lamar is wearing me out. Would you please call us home? Man, I'm asking him stuff all the time. I'm calling on him all the time. I'm leaning on him all the time. I'm rejoicing with I, I, I praise God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got him. And he has taken care of me. Continues to take care of me. And he will do so until God calls me out. Tonight. I've tried my best to tell you not to be a man pleaser. All right? I want you to come to church with the idea of pleasing God. If every one of us will come in that door with the thought, I'm going to please God and worship God, we'll have one of them throw down kind of meetings. Woo! We'll all be shouting and running. But you got to come in with the attitude, I want to worship. I want to praise God. I want to please Him. I'm not going over there and do things just to make the preacher happy. You want to make the preacher happy? Please God. God is excited when y'all done like you done this morning, just people popping up. Just get up and testify. You don't have to wait on me to say, hey, anybody got a testimony? Just get up. Say, I got one. You ain't got to ask me. I want to tell what God done for me. Just get up and tell it. Give us a verse of song. Why don't we stand tonight? Tonight would be a good time to turn things around and say, I'm not going to please people anymore. I'm here to please God. It's not about what I can do for others. It ain't about making other people happy. I want to make God happy. I want to please Him because I'm going to stand before Him one day. And I want him to be pleased with me when I stand there. I don't want him to say, well, I wanted you to do this and you didn't. And I wanted you to do that and you didn't. And how about this over here? You did and I told you not to. Hmm. Those are some of the things that's going to get us. Oh, we jumped the gun on some stuff. We want to make people happy. How about making God happy? Have you made God happy today? You have to think about it a minute. Now, have I, have I done something to make God happy today? Or did I do something that wasn't quite right? Think about it. This altar is open. Page 44.